In today's world, everyone is hyped up about different types of energy. Energy such as nuclear may seem appealing in the fact that they release no carbon dioxide, but they too have their drawbacks. For a first, nuclear requires the importation of fuel, and once it is used, there is no truly safe way to store it. And what would happen should anything go wrong? This is not just the catastrophe of the century, it's the biggest disaster in the history of mankind. Near the city of Pripyat in the Ukrainian SSR, reactor number 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant went critical. At 1.23 a.m. on the 26th of April, the world would witness the worst radioactive disaster it had ever seen. The bad fortune began at 1.23 a.m. when the reactor operators were unaware of the unstable conditions the reactor was experiencing. The cooling pumps weren't operating correctly, causing steam gaps which only increased the power of the reactor. As the reactor power increased, the xenon poisoning, which slows neutron production, wasn't enough to control the reaction. With the manual and automatic neutron absorbing control rods gone, nothing was in place to prevent a runaway reaction. The workers realized this and began to insert the control rods. However, they could only be inserted very slowly, and as the rods were inserted, they displaced some coolant, worsening the reaction. At this point, the reactor overheated and some of the fuel rods broke, blocking the control rods. The rods could only be inserted one-third of the way, and seven seconds after the emergency button was pressed, the reactor jumped to ten times the normal operating limit. This rapid rise in temperature started to melt the fuel rods and they began to flow into the flooded basement. This was the trigger of the steam explosion destroying the reactor and allowing radiation to escape. The environmental impacts of the Chernobyl accident substantially affected the ecosystem in the area surrounding the plant. Due to a large variety of radioactive materials released, the ecosystem as well as the natural flora and fauna were adversely affected. Because the plant is located on a major river, officials were worried about drinking water which had higher levels of radioactivity than normal. Bioaccumulation of radioactivity in fish resulted in concentrations that were above guidelines for consumption. As for flora, immediately after the disaster, four square kilometers of pine forest died, earning it the name the Red Forest. Some organisms in the worst hit area also died or stopped reproducing due to the high radiation exposure. In the area since the disaster, however, wildlife has made a remarkable comeback. Some birds and animals that had never been seen in the area prior to the disaster are now plentiful due to a lack of humans. In fact, there is even a fungi growing inside of the reactor walls. The disaster had also impacted many hundreds of thousands of people. 400,000 people have been evacuated from contaminated regions and an additional 1.8 million people are living in areas that are still considered to be contaminated with radioactive particles. It is estimated that the release of radiation affected around 17 million people as the cloud of radiation traveled with the wind. Now that the areas around the plant have been abandoned, the city of Pipette has been left for nature to reclaim. Abandoned buildings line the streets where street lamps have given way to trees. Although many elements have already reached their half-life and broken down to safe levels, cesium-137 is still yet to reach its half-life and remains at levels too high for humans to repopulate the area. While nuclear may seem like a brilliant source of non-greenhouse producing energy, we must never forget the Chernobyl disaster and the environmental impact it has had on our planet.